Good walk. Welcome back. This is Bits and Insight. Tonight I told you we want to focus on the housing sector in this country. And of course the question is how do we ensure that uh, each and every Kenyan has access to quality and decent uh, houses? That has always been the million dollar question. And tonight we want to attempt to respond to these issues. And of course bearing in mind that uh, the housing is one of the big four agenda as outlined by President Uhuru Kenyatta. The question is, how do we ensure that this becomes a reality? Joining me in the studio is Ruben Kimani, CEO of Username Investment Limited. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ruben, for joining us here. Thank you, Next Brian. to Ruben, we have Peter Kamau, who is the CEO of Sahabu Limited, Land Limited. Kamau, Asante Sana for joining us here. Thank you. I want to start, first of all, on your views. I mean, you represent the private sector, and I want to start with you, Ruben. Uh, First of all, when you scan the Big Four agenda on housing, what conclusions do you make? Uh, I would like first to say hi to our viewers today. Hello. Um, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. Big Four is one um, of the most, I would say, vibrant strategies that you have had over a long time. Mm. Uh, and I'm looking at housing as one of the biggest uh, amongst the all the big four, when you look at universal health care, yeah. the agriculture and manufacturing, uh, affordable housing is the biggest. So for me, I'm seeing this as a big breakthrough, if you are to get it right. I've seen the plans, some of the plans that you have shown on that big screen. And for me, I've, uh, I, I feel like if you are to implement this meticulously, for me, it's about implementation. Implementation. The plans I have seen look very good. Mm -hmm. But if you are to implement, I, I sometimes even say, if you are to do even 50% of what you are saying, mm. this is something that can change this country. Not just for change. housing. Mm. Uh, you talk about 350,000 jobs, yeah. even for other sectors as well. Yeah. yeah. Very well. Uh, he's talking about implementation, and of course, we know for sure. Kenya has never had a shortage of beautiful master plans and documents and, and, and all these. Uh, Kamau, uh, <laughs> I want to hear from you. Uh, mm. Do you share the same sentiments that uh, the implementation of the Big Four agenda is the elephant in the room? One, you know, one thing, let me greet the, the viewers. Hi, the viewers. My name is Peter. Mm, to me, the Big Four agenda in terms of housing in, the, in terms of housing. One, to me, it is possible. Two, there are dynamics that we can look, that we can make sure that we can be able to implement them. And one of the things that are, it, it all start with me and you. So by the end of every day, the, the, let's stop throwing the game to one another. But one, by the end of the day, if me I start as Peter, then it trickle to Ruben, and then it trickle to you. If work has come together, we can do it. And we all need to support we. We as private developer and government, we support one another. Mm. So to me, it is possible. To you, it is possible. Mm. Uh, when you scan the issues of housing in this country, and this is something that has been discussed over a long time, in this country, and, and, and we know for sure that um, millions and millions of Kenyans, you know, they do not have mm. access to quality shelter in this country. Um, are you convinced that the government is doing enough to ensure that each and every Kenyan is housed decently? One, is, we, I can give it 20%, but you, you also look at the things that affect that for the sake of implementation of this big four agenda of housing. When we look at the, the interest rate of the bank, still affecting the housing system. So if you also look at the, the, the corruption, still affecting it in a bigger way. So to my best of my knowledge and to my best of what I can say, still government need to do something. One, let it reduce the, the task rate, the the KRA and all other stuff to reduce it. Number two, let's try to make the approvals and uh, and and the process of the documentation to be easier. By that one, the, the housing system 
it will be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, um, uh, uh, Ruben, uh, when we talk about affordable housing, number one, first of all, have we ever managed to get the concept right? In the, in the understanding of government under the Big Four agenda, affordable housing is a unit that goes for between 650,000 shillings to 1 million shillings, actually 1.2 million shillings. Uh, when you look at the land prices in this country, and in the last 20 years, the cost of land has almost tripled in this country. And this has purely been driven by speculation. When you look at the cost of material, in the last 15 years, the cost of material has appreciated by a whole 72%. The question is this, is it possible to deliver a unit that costs for between 650,000 shillings to 1.2 billion shillings in a country called Kenya? But I would say that is a very difficult um, uh, implementation, if I may say. It is quite difficult in the current state of things, if you are to ask me. If you look clearly, especially the cost of land, it has gone high, as you say, majorly because of speculation. But I also look at a country that is growing very fast. If you look at uh, the population growth, uh, there's some statistics that say we are 50 million, I think, from World Bank. Mm -hmm. And every year we are increasing by a million people. Yeah. The other interesting statistics about uh, urbanization, all of us come to Nairobi yeah. with no intention of going back to the village. They, they say about half a million people come to our urban centers every year, yeah. which puts a lot of strain on available infrastructure. Mm. And that's why you'll find as much as this speculation, it's because what is available may not be enough for everyone at the moment. Mm. So you'll have a special land, if you look at 50 kilometers from CBD, if you look at all the millions of people uh, who are in this town, we may not be able to fit within that radius. Yeah. So if you look at the costs of land, then you look at the cost of materials. There's a, study, there's a book I was reading then I realized, something like cement. If you look at the cost in Africa, compared to what we have in other developed countries. Mm. Ours is so expensive. It's yet, actually four times more yes. expensive than... Yet we are countries. the guys who, who are in it. Somebody else was asking why um, uh, building one kilometer of road in Africa will cost you maybe a billion shillings, Kenyan mm. shillings. Mm. Same in the rest will cost you a million dollars. And uh, maybe some uh, the cost of cement is one of those things maybe that influences that. I don't know about the underlying issues about the, maybe what I've just said, but I believe that is also what is coming to uh, the uh, housing uh, sector in the country. Hmm. You'll find that some materials are too expensive, and for you to be able to achieve a house, a dignified house, not just any house, worth a million shillings, that will be a very difficult thing to do. But the good news is there are things that we can be able to do to alleviate that and what over are time. Hmm. Uh, I'm looking like he has talked about uh, 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 some, some of the things that are already happening in the country. Like if you look at construction materials, if housing is that serious, I would say we zero rate some of this. Uh, uh, I know the government is looking at collecting taxes, hmm. but we can zero rate some of the items. Like rolling that, sheets. I remember there's a time um, uh, tax on motorbikes yeah. was, I think, zero rated. Mm. Yeah. We did not have motorbikes. And most, we used to see motorbikes in mm. Nigerian so, movies, if yeah. you remember. Sure. Yeah. But later, the tax was removed. And all these people are employed right now because uh, we were able to remove that tax. So I'm looking at that effect mm -hmm. and what we can do in housing at the moment mm taxes we can be able to remove such that maybe one of a bag or something instead of going for the current maybe about 600 mm -hmm. which it goes for like 300 or even 200 so that we're able to achieve this objective the other thing which i have always been advocating for if you look at all these people who have bought plots uh, especially in Nairobi, we have quite a number and i'm looking at a situation where we can be able to do uh, maybe infrastructure something like tarmac see 
If you go to Isinia, Thika, and all those areas where people have so many plots, go and do maybe a five kilometer stretch of tarmac or even 10. Like if you look at Thika Road, if you have to do 10 kilometer stretch from the highway, maybe you do one in Roiro, another one in Tall, like that. Mm. All those people who have been able to purchase plots in those areas may be able to build. Because most of the people who are building, they look at where they are building. You may not be able to access that place. Yeah. There is no electricity, there is no water. And that's why you find developers like us will come, will have to tell you that for this project that we are doing, we have to bring you water, we have to bring you electricity and all those things at our own cost. Very well. What about if we are to do those projects, mm -hmm. uh, those infrastructure projects as government, yeah. in areas where people can be able to build Right time. We see a radius of 50 kilometers, 50 to 80 kilometers from CBD. Yeah. For me, I believe mm -hmm. maybe the private sector can do more than half a million that the government Units. is targeting. Well, uh, let, let me f uh, hear from you, uh, uh, Kamau. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have seen a situation in the last t t 10 or 15 years. I mean, we have seen a huge subdivision of land in this country, especially in, 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 in urban areas, uh, uh, whereby, I mean, we've gone as low as one eighth of a quarter mm -hmm. uh, or, or one eighth of, a, of an acre. Mm -hmm. uh, have we made the situation worse? Not, not by no. aggressive subdivision. Mm -hmm. One, it will make us more, more it will make work easier. That's number one. Number two, one, what I would encourage, because nobody can afford one acre or two acres, but there's somebody who can afford an eighth. You get me? So uh, what I, I always, but there's some areas we cannot encourage to for subdivision of an eighth. Because that one is maybe specifically for farming. But one of the things I want to, we look at it, when, when whenever we private developer, we are dealing with the land. We need to also focus in, in, in this way. If we subdivide an eighth here, is it going to help of anything? Some areas they are not helping, some areas they are helping. Because one, if you talk about there are some places in Dika, going to those areas, they have make it more better than what was before. So if you look in that perspective, it is it it all determined what perspective are you looking at to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, tell me things. I mean, you, you know, the whole plan of the government is uh, to ensure that it taps into in, in, into the private sector's uh, uh, funding to ensure that uh, ninety percent of these units are delivered. Mm -hmm. The private sector they have the money and they have the resources. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see any challenges you know that might arise when it comes to partnering with the government in the delivery of of affordable houses well it all depend uh, my 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 everything trickle it all depend with one thing the people who are going to be entrusted by government are they going to be trustworthy and and if everything can be if corruption be fight by us Stop looking for the government, but we start fighting corruption now. I'm telling you the truth. This thing of housing, affordable housing, is coming to reality. But there is a, uh, it is possible. One, if government can lower down the cost of maybe what the Ruben was talking about, the cement. If you look even, if you do know it is importing a cement from China up to Mobasa, it will cost you. 300, 300, 300, 300 shillings yeah. per bag. And us here in Kenya, the baburi, the other thing, they are made here in Kenya. And one bag of cement, you are getting it at a cost of 550 or 650, 650 That shillings. is the retail price. The retail price. So you get to wonder, if government can try to lower down, they, part, they go to, you know, because this guy in, in factory, before they price that late, they know that there's so many things that government have, there's so many tasks that government have taxed them. So if government can try to lower down those, th those things, one, they lower down the, the, the production fee and other stuff. So that, that bag, bag, one bag of cement can come to a level of 250,000, 250. Mm -hmm. it, it's very affordable. One, you also look, in like things like electricity, 
government make use that electricity is provided, infrastructure is provided, and three, to make to make to, to crown it. Let us we have a positive mind to earn this. Mm -hmm. Because if we, we have an we, we we are doing it fifty fifty, is all of, of us can have a, a positive mind to add this and we start working toward this, we are going to make it. Tell me this, Ruben. Uh, I mean, for example, when you look at Nairobi, uh, and we know this has been a serious challenge, uh, the issue of land grabbing. And we know for sure that, uh, like Nairobi, for example, in the 80s and the early 90s, the government, the Nairobi City Council then, and Kenya Railways, they were the biggest owners of space in the city of Nairobi. As we speak now, that is not the same. That is not the case. Serious land grabbing has taken place. And so you find a situation whereby the government, even the government itself, it doesn't have space to put up houses. How are we going to ensure we put up these units in, 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 in the face of serious land grabbing? Maybe I would look, I would start from uh, the plan that has been put there. And I looked at it and I saw a schedule of how they intend to do these houses. 5,000 here, mm. this county is going to do 200,000. Yeah. Some houses in Park Road, others from other estates that uh, are owned by the government and by owned by the government. I felt like um, we may not be able to achieve, for us to be very practical about this affordable housing, and uh, the grabbing question. We may not be able to do all those things at once. We may start with what the government already owns and work on that. I look at that plan and say, if like the 5,000 houses that are being built in Mavoko, I think those are at advanced stages. We first do that and we finish because the land question is not there in terms of ownership by the government. Then we go as, as they have as they have been able to uh, to put in that paper, they implement what they have said so that they can be able to achieve what is not in question. This is also the legal question uh, in all this debate. These are litigious country, if I may say, where you start something and people go to court. So the moment you start uh, trying to recover the land that have been grabbed all over the years, mm. that is the only thing you'll do as government. So you'll forget about affordable. For me, I will feel you will end up, you you end up, you know, pacing up and down in the corridors <laughs> of, 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 of justice, and you'll forget affordable housing. Hmm. So I felt maybe while the government work with what we already know, the plan that they have put in place, let have those houses come, and I believe the public goodwill is there. The moment you see five thousand houses today, hmm. another uh, ten thousand after one year people will be able to contribute to this and this thing will have a ripple effect. Then we can be able to uh, then sit down and say, let us start recovering. After we have built some houses, this public support, everyone can see what we are doing. Then we start reclaiming that land. And you can see you have a lot of demolition taking place, telling me that this war is possible. If you go back and check what has been grabbed over the years, it's possible to look and start step by step. If you try to do all these things at okay. once, for mm -hmm. me, I think it will not work. It will backfire. But it has to be step by step mm -hmm. until. But I insist, we have very good plans. All those plans that you have, what we have to do is to have meticulous implementation. Mm -hmm. non, no nonsense kind of implementation so mm -hmm. that it comes to pass. So that you go through all the roadblocks. There are laws that need to be repealed. Uh, Charles Hinga, the PS for housing, has been very passionate about yeah. this whole concept. There are laws to be repealed. There is land to be uh, uh, procurement process to be shortened. You know, the government procurement process takes time. A bit lengthy. And I would like to say this: for us to be able to achieve this, we need to clearly look at what hinders it. If it's about construction materials that we are debating here, can we check? Like how that house is supposed to cost maybe between 600 and 3 million, I think for the uh, highest in that order. Let us check what makes this thing. If we say it is land, 
how are we exactly going to solve this? And because we have land in this country, mm. this may not be enough in Nairobi alone for all of us. Mm. Can we check what we need to do to be ensure it is available at the right price? Because some land, there's some land that lays bare. If it's about construction, I think we need to make very hard decisions and zero rate some of these things so that people can say, instead of a house costing uh, three million to build, it costs two. And as a developer, mm. I can come and realize there's an opportunity here, and you'll find username, you find the hub, and many other companies out there coming, coming in to do it Very well. and uh, uh, help the government. I mean, I mean, you have pointed out at Mavoko, you know, uh, uh, the 5,000 units in Mavoko. And, and we know for sure, I mean, for you, uh, uh, by the time you decide that uh, this is where I'm going to settle, you have to look at a number of factors. Number one is transport. Yes. Will I be able to get to my place of work or to my uh, place of business, you know, Good with a lot time. of ease? Uh, there is security. There is water. There is power. Uh, I want to find out from you, Kamau. Mm -hmm. uh, we have huge tracts of land in this country mm -hmm. that are lying idle that are owned by the government, mm -hmm. if, from, from, from the Agricultural Development Corporation mm -hmm. to, 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 to institutions like the Kenya Railways. Mm -hmm. We have huge tracts of land that are lying idle, but mm -hmm. access to those places is, in, is, is, is completely non-existent. Yeah. How then do we ensure that we can have a situation whereby people, they live in, like, a hundred kilometers outside Nairobi, mm. but they still come to work here in Nairobi, mm. you know, fast enough, and they get home uh, 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 safe as well. The, it ought to recall the infrastructure, so loads, electricity. For example, in that one in Mavoko, I think if we are from here to Mavoko, it's around 75 kilometers, 75 to, uh, I think it is less than. It's actually less than 50. It's less than 50 kilometers. Mm. And you can realize, one, there's a headache of traffic jam is quite high. Mombasa Road. Mombasa Road and all other stuff. Mm. And if you go back and you read about Vision 2030, I love going to that book of Vision 2030. You talk about Greater Eastern Bypass. You talk about there's so many loads that have been proposed. If government can be able to implement and make ac those land to be accessible, one, by those la those laws that are being proposed, they be implemented. I think, I think every, even you can live in Embu and you work in Nairobi. Even Meru. If we can be able to have good infrastructure, for example, if you go to China, in fact, someone is living in Guangzhou, and and by the end of the day, he's going to he's, he, he's traveling like 400 kilometers to go where he's working, but they have trains because they have a high-speed train, train system that travels at a speed of 280 yes. uh, uh, kilometers per hour. And in fact, that is workable. And let me tell you something: with the, what government correctors task in here in Kenya, I can tell you. That one is enough to make to change Kenya. But you find before it get to the account of government, it have get to so many people pocket. And you come to realize that if all of us and I still trickle to one question, to, to one thing, if all of us we can fight corruption, we make sure what government correct it is invested back to people into a jig of Kenya, we can, we can make it. Because you look, uh, and I always, I always say like this, G making one road here in Kenya, is, when contractor is given, it's taking five years before he complete it. If we, all of us, we, we become faithful and trustworthy with what government have entrusted us and what everyone have been entrusted in the responsibility, it's going to be workable. Uh -huh. We work on infrastructure, those trains, they get in place, and, and Kenya is going to be good. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, 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 Ruben, yeah. tell me this. I mean, 25% you know, of the Kenyan population, they live in urban areas. It is estimated that by the year 2030, about 40% of Kenyans are going to live in urban areas. 
What do we need to do at this point to forestall a housing crisis in this country? Uh, I think for me, I, I usually look about uh, at uh, practicality of uh, ideas that are presented. Of course, uh, there's uh, politics and there's also the reality. The ideas that cannot survive for so long. For me, it's about practicality. What we need to do first, uh, this housing crisis, like the, the government is providing for half a million until 2022. Mm -hmm. They're able to achieve. Yeah. But the number of uh, families that need housing this, in this country is actually 2.4 million. They say the shortage is 2 million, increasing at 200,000 every year. Mm -hmm. Developers do 50,000, mm -hmm. and 50,000 are usually high-end units. The common monarch cannot be able to afford. Yeah. So this crisis keeps increasing. What I, I think we need to do, we need to have a long-term approach, maybe mm. not up to 2022 definitely, mm. a long-term approach where we ask ourselves, mm. how has this thing been solved in other countries? China has a billion people, but uh, maybe they are much better than us in terms of housing, oh, if you look at it that way. Mm. We are just 50 million, it tells you our problem is much less. We can be able to study that. And one of the things I, I, I read about, especially in Mexico, what they did, they identified all areas within 80 kilometer radius of the main cities. Mm -hmm. Like we check 80 kilometer radius from, uh, uh, from now, that mm -hmm. is Cajiado, mm -hmm. it is past uh, Thika, it is uh, Konza, I mean, Naivasha. Naivasha. What you do, you, are, you draw a radius from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Then maybe uh, cities like Nakuru, uh, Kisumu and Mubasa, you can do 50 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Then what you do in those areas, you develop serious infrastructure that can be able to support mm -hmm. people who are building. The government cannot build houses for the population. Yeah. You just facilitate, enable by zero rating. But the key for me is infrastructure. We are talking about uh, people who live like uh, 200 kilometers away and they are able to commute in first world countries. We need a long-term approach, can take 10 years. We, we, we need even metro uh, kind of station. I've been to Europe myself and you cannot imagine. Mm. A very long distance can be covered in some few minutes. Yeah. If you look at even SGR, which has been implemented, mm -hmm. you come from places like Konza, which are like 60 kilometers away. You take 25 minutes. What about if you are to have metros 80 kilometers from CBD? Yeah. People would stay 80 kilometers. We had uh, super high, and I would like to maybe congratulate the government for the roads that are being done. Maybe the media has not been able to highlight this. Mm. We have a very serious road in Wayakwe coming up, uh, another during in Mombasa Road. I would really encourage those efforts and some roads that are being done, especially in Gong, for example, where you have so many projects. There are tarmacs that are coming up. If only they can be finished, this one would work. Imagine how many people would drive 80 kilometers radius from Nairobi. Mm. Those are so many people. And for me, I feel like that is a long-term kind of uh, 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 an approach that we can take. Yeah. We also need, to, very fast, we also need to look at the mortgages. Maybe they, in this plan, they have talked about National the Housing kind of Development financing. Fund. Yeah. Maybe that one will help. And they also need to look at uh, the construction materials, like we said, and finally, especially in this affordable housing thing, the allocation me mechanism so that we don't bango it up. Mm -hmm. There are people who are very needy and there are people who are not needy. I think we need a very serious criteria to know who can qualify for these houses and it has to be very clear from the beginning so that we don't have uh, a very challenging problem in 2022. Mm -hmm. We have done 100,000 houses and uh, they did not go to the right people. Uh, we need to look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, come out, tell me things. Uh, I mean, so uh, he has talked about, you know, the number of, the, and, and that is very true, you know, the government has invested massive resources, you know, in mm. the expansion of infrastructure in this country. But still, we are yet to see the government, you know, coming up with a comprehensive uh, uh, public transport system. And there is no country, mm. you know, that can deal with perennial challenges of traffic jam without a comprehensive mass transport system. Mm -hmm. Are we then winking in the dark? Mm, I can say I can see by the load the government is proposing and the, the government that the load are on, on process getting done. I think the, 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 the government need to get more serious 
and coming more harsh to the engineers and contractors that are on site. Because you end up seeing that the road was proposed, the money was given, the road is halfway, and it is 10 years down the line. So if government can go back to the drawing board and get a treat a bit serious, this thing that is going to be done. And I can, we am trusting and I'm believing in the next one year, two years, they're going to be light. There will be light at the end of the tunnel. There will be light. Uh, uh, gentlemen, because we have to wind up, I mean, you talked about uh, uh, Europe, which is a very good example. And I want to give you a very good example of uh, Geneva, I mean, uh, of Switzerland, whereby, uh, because Geneva is a very expensive city, mm. you have a lot of people who works in Geneva, but they live on the other side of France because they use uh, 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 the train system, which is very much efficient. Mm. And it will, take, it will take you less than one hour, you know, for you to cross from uh, 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 France and come and work in, in Geneva, and then you go back in the evening. Uh, Ruben, what then do we need to do, you know, to implement such a system here in this country so that we ensure that uh, people have the ability to move from point A to point B without being inconvenienced? I think he has raised a very important point, especially about accountability. I think this is one of the biggest challenges in our country, not just with government. We are looking at a society. I usually ask myself, am I responsible enough? Because you'll find, even when you hear there's a lot of corruption in some places, there's also something much bigger called mismanagement. Mm. You may not be able to have corruption in your department, but you have a lot of mismanagement mm. where resources go to the wrong places. Yeah. What I have seen the government uh, try to do, especially over the last uh, one, two, three years, they have been they've been trying to put a lot of money in development. Mm. So, but sometimes when you read the newspaper, you get shocked because that money, every day you hear two billion, three billion, did not go to the right use. What I see, especially not just for Kenya in Africa, we have enough resources. If you look at the tax being collected over time, it has increased. And I feel there is a lot that can be done even with the money. The key question to ask ourselves for, for us to be able to implement is this. How can we make the cost of like doing one kilometer of road same as what we have in the Western world? Yeah. How can we make our way of implementing projects? You talk about projects that might even take 10 years the same as in the West, or even in China that has grown very fast. Mm. Those guys are able to, I've been, I've had an opportunity of working with Chinese and telecommunication uh, company before. You'll find that these guys are quite very aggressive in terms of their, of their work culture. Things get done and they are closed. But if you compare with uh, some of the projects that we do, especially in the government angle, sometimes they take too long, they take too much resources. Mm. I think I would say, There's a like lot of he said, uh, as much as we blame government, I think it also boils down to us. Government is you and me, and we keep changing our leaders and nothing is changing. So it means there's a problem in the society, and we need to address it from me first. And mm. say, I have to be responsible on the work I'm doing. You find out if you come to username, for example, I know I'm responsible for my clients. They come to invest, they come to look for homes. I have to deliver that. There's no question about it. What we need is a culture change where we have responsibility. You are given a job in a government ministry. You are supposed to deliver a road, the correct budget. Why not do it? I see this a lot, especially in Asia. Mm. People even commit suicide because they felt they did not deliver enough. Yeah. I think we need that change of culture. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, I think we also have to push our government. I, I believe there is a lot of... Yeah. They have done enough trips. Everyone knows about Europe. <laughs> the the trips. And all those things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the time to get real mm -hmm. and say, this is... Uh, uh, we have the Karod, which was well done. Mubasa Road is being done. And many other projects. This is what exactly we need to do in terms of infrastructure. This is what exactly we need to do in terms of accountability, of use of money in government, mm. and many other things, and get it in it. But for me, at the end of the day, as we close, I would say we implement what we have planned. We have enough plans in this country, and I think the it's just a matter of been the challenge. coming and saying, let us start doing this. It is supposed to take one year. Let us get it done. And I believe it will be good. Mm -hmm. It is not that easy, but, but I believe we have to start from somewhere. Good. Uh, Kamal, what are your final thoughts? 
my final thought it is this we are responsible of doing it we can make it and we can do it if all of us corruption we can start fighting corruption in our house in our bedroom then we can <laughs> in our bedroom <laughs> yes that's a very interesting well, one let me tell you something <laughs> there's corruption in the bedroom <laughs> everywhere yeah. if we start fighting it in our level as as Eric have said it Ruben have said it mm. we are going to make it good so it is possible and let's have a positive mind mm -hmm. yeah Thank you so very much, gentlemen, uh, for joining us here and for sharing your insights. Mm. Definitely, it is up to us. This is our country, mm. and uh, we must do all that it takes to ensure that we take it to the next level. Sure. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, O'Brien. Well, Ruben Kiman is the CEO of Username Investments, and uh, Peter Kamau is the CEO of the Harbour Land uh, Limited. The two joining us here to share their insights on what we need to do in order to deliver affordable housing to Kenyans.